grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and good morning. My name is Greg, and I am one of the pastors here at First Presbyterian Church, and it is my joy to welcome you uh, to this birthday celebration uh, on June the 5th, 2022. Uh, you might think, whose birthday it is? And if you guessed the church, you were right. Today is the day of Pentecost, where we celebrate the birth of of the church, the coming of the Holy Spirit uh, to the disciples after the ascension of Jesus um, into heaven. Um, so we celebrate uh, the birth day of our church that has led to um, this uh, some 2,000 years ago. So we are excited um, for that. Um, as you can tell, the wind is blowing through our, our uh, the spirit is blowing through our space. Heidi and I uh, decided that we weren't ready to put the cross away because we love this cross and we have some amazing fabric and we have all kinds of different bound and the church has accumulated over the years. So we thought instead of handing out pinwheels for you to blow on uh, because COVID, um, we decided that we would put the pinwheels up uh, on the cross and have a fan blow the pinwheels. Now, as you can see, some of the pinwheels are spinning just smoothly. Others, a little creaky, and others aren't doing anything, which I feel like represents the church sometimes, represents me. Sometimes I'm raring to go. The Spirit has me raring to go. Sometimes uh, my back hurts a little bit, and sometimes I just want to sit there and not do anything, and that does not mean that the Spirit isn't flowing through those pinwheels and this space, um, and so we are excited um, for that. I also love uh, Pentecost because I get to wear this stole, which my mother-in-law made. Uh, I don't really get to, I don't get to wear it very often, so that's exciting for me. So, um, as you may know, worship has starts at a different time, starting now. So, uh, you made it on time. Excellent work. Good job. <laughs> uh, and uh, this summer, um, we have a whole lot of plans uh, for us and for the congregation. The summer planning team has been working hard getting ready, um, and we'll be releasing some of those dates and some of those things uh, as we go forward. Um, but the thing I wanted to let you know about this week, uh, this week is uh, this year we're also we're doing summer bingo again. Uh, this summer bingo is a little different than last year. Um, uh, so um, there are still prizes, but they're a little different. Um, and they, all of the squares are... are um, Inspired by our three different worship series. Um, starting next week, we will be doing a series called Honoring God's Diversity. Um, and then in July, we will do one of my favorite things. We get to watch movies and talk about them from a theological perspective. Now, we're not going to watch movies on Sunday morning, although we could. What we're going to do is we're going to show the movies... Um, during uh, the week on Wednesday before service and then on before um, the Sunday. And then on Sunday, we'll have the service will be about that movie and, and the theology around it. The three movies that we have are um, uh, one that you may know. Uh, it was one of my favorites growing up, Giant, um, which is available on uh, HBO Max. If you have HBO Max, it's also available for rent uh, for $3.99. And if you don't want to do either of those and you want to come in July, July 13th to watch it here with us. That's great. Uh, other movies are Inside Out, uh, Pixar Great, and um, Turning Red uh, are three movies, right? I got a, a good from Elijah over here, so I'm just make a good, good. So, um, so if you get a, a cross or down or diagonal, um, the church will buy a flock of chickens for farming communities around the world. Um, through the Presbyterian Giving Catalog. And if 10 people fill a, get a blackout, we will buy a hive of bees for a community in Guatemala through the Presbyterian um, Giving Catalog. So you might think, bingo, that's not my thing, but guess what? This bingo is going to help others. So we invite you uh, to play along and to, um, and you get to watch movies, which I think is really an excellent thing. Um, also, we will have our pizza party, and our uh, all church picnic in the in the August, and we'll be giving you those dates um, coming soon. Um, so we're excited for the summer. And there, um, the third week, uh, another thing, the third 
uh, sermon series is going to be based on a book called Unafraid by Adam Hamilton. Our, uh, summer, mu- our summer worship team, our summer planning team pulled that together. Um, and it's about um, being unafraid in uncertain times. Um, not like we know what that's about. Um, and so uh, we encourage you, well, we will have books available here. Um, you can also purchase them from your favorite book retailer, uh, Fair Trade Books or Amazon, or, um, and in your favorite format, either ebook or Kindle or um, Audible or uh, audiobook or, you know, actual book, if you like that, if you're still one of those folks like me. Um, so all of that excitement uh, as we begin the summer and... Um, Once again, our summer has started with tragedy. Um, I don't know, uh, many of you may know the Koenig family. Uh, You may not, Rachel and Jeremy Koenig uh, are a family uh, here in town. Um, Jeremy was out with their four children uh, boating and um, they got hit by a barge. Uh, The boat failed and they, um, it was in the bend, it was a whole um, uh, thing and Three of the children and uh, Jeremy were ejected, everybody was ejected from the boat, and three of the children and Jeremy were um, popped up and went to the shore uh, and were uninjured. A fourth, Victor, who is five, um, was underwater for a long time. Vincent, excuse me, yes, sorry, Vincent uh, was underwater for a long time. Um, Luckily, he popped up, and when he popped up, he popped up right next to the first responders. So he was able to get immediate care uh, as soon as they found him. Um, The first responders did an amazing job. The doctors at uh, the hospital did an amazing job. He is breathing on his own. His pupils are responsive and he is making some movement. Um, He is intubated um, and in intensive care. And right now um, it is a wait and see game um, for his uh, prognosis. Um, But I know Jeremy and Rachel and Jack and Felix, and what's their daughter's name? Hazel. Hazel um, are uh, reeling from this uh, moment of family fun on the boat on the river uh, turned into tragedy. Um, So we as a community in Red Wing pray for them, um, as a uh, church pray for them because we know what tragedy feels like um, in our space. Um, So um, thoughts and prayers for them. Um, if we know of uh, ways that we can be uh, supportive other than thoughts and prayers, whether that's donations or casseroles or anything we hear, we will uh, pass that along um, to, as, uh, to anyone who is interested in that. Also, again, we come after mass shootings in Oklahoma, um, in Laguna Woods, a few weeks ago, that happened at a Taiwanese Presbyterian church, Ames, Iowa, Philadelphia are just the ones that are popping up in my brain at the moment over the last week. Um, and we, um, we pause to think about um, the availability, the access, and the desire to use weapons of mass destruction on um, citizenry. So I would like for us to take a moment to, to remember the Koenig family and to pray for Vincent and um, to remember all of those affected by gun violence, um, those that we hear about and make the news and those that do not make the national news. So let us pray. Spirit move in our hearts and in our communities and in our world, pushing us, enlivening us, breathing into us justice, peace, and love. 
Amen. Please join me in the call to worship. Holy Spirit, divine breath, wild winds of change. She comes to rattle all the pain. To provoke, provoke with prophecies. To disturb the of evil's In her presence, all the earth trembles with anticipation of freedom. She awakens the senses to the nearness of salvation. Come, Holy Spirit. As we open with prayer, I will pray and then there will be a moment of silence and then I would invite you to uh, pray with me and that prayer will be on the screen. Also, um, if you have... Um, Issues seeing the screen um, with uh, having a hard time read the screen. Uh, we have a few copies of large print things so that you can hold and look at um, that might make it easier for you to see. Um, and they're on the, the usher's table there um, in the back. Let us pray. The wind blows and we hear the sound of it, but we do not know where it comes from. We try to explain it away, but even our breath speaks of new things we cannot understand. We may be together in one place, but we do not speak with one voice. We do not listen with one heart. We hear and dismiss your deeds of power, your call to love those who are different, your insistence that the whole world be included. You pour out your spirit and we squash the vision. It is, it's too big, and it's too unrealistic too uncertain, too unruly. You send visions of a future with hope and we look back instead. You light the way and we look for a fire extinguisher, trying to keep ourselves and you safe. Forgive us, O God, we long for your new life, but we do not know how to live it. Please pray with me. Rush into this place again and fill every nook and cranny with dreams and visions of possibility. Turn our hushed whispers into proclamations of your grace in every language of the Lord world. Lead us out into the future. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and join us in singing our opening hymn, hymn number 20. All things bright and beautiful.
Please be seated. This morning, our scripture comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Listen now uh, what the author of Acts has for you this morning. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And, and suddenly, from heaven, there, was, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house they were sit, where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native languages of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea, people of Judea, and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and, and, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your, your young people shall prophesy, and your young people shall see visions, and your old folks shall dream dreams, even upon my slaves, all of them. In those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in heaven above and signs on earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wanted also to lift up a prayer uh, from Edith Williams, whose aunt Bernice and family lost their uncle Walt, and prayers for them this day as well. I also want to say that um, I forgot to add my sermon text to the uh, PowerPoint, or the, the thing that I'm reading. So now you get to watch me dingle around on my iPad to try to find the file and make up space by just talking <laughs> randomly about things. Um, there we go. So let's pray, because I need it. <laughs> O oh Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every one of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Today is the day of Pentecost, which is a really fun word. Today is the day we consider to be the birthday of the church. Today is the day that we proclaim that the Holy Spirit has come to us. Uh, on the first Pentecost... The disciples were all together in one place. Jesus has died. Jesus has risen. And Jesus has now ascended into heaven. It has been quite a few weeks in the lives of these disciples. 
And so today I want to try to paint a picture for you. Give you a sense of what was going on outside the gathering place where the disciples were all together. In Jerusalem in the first century at this time of year was the Jewish festival of Shavuot. Or the festival of the booths. Jewish travelers from all over the known world would come to Jerusalem. By some accounts, the town of Jerusalem, which was normally about 50,000 folks, would swell to a million. Just picture River City days. Times like 10 or 15. I mean, you think traffic's bad now. There were people everywhere. There were people from everywhere. And the disciples were worn out. They were frightened. They were, they were still grieving, still reeling from all that they had been experiencing since Good Friday. Good Friday was only a little while ago, 40 days in our tradition. And then it only gets wilder. The book of Acts says, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and the tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. I really love this image. Um, there's this thing that you have to do when you are trying to be a pastor, you're trying to be ordained. It's called the MMPI-2. It's, um, it says if you're um, where you are mentally. It's like 500 questions, and they are yes or no answers. And one of the questions I will never forget is, are you fascinated by fire? <laughs> Right? So you're taking this and you know that they're trying to judge whether or not you're mentally capable of being a pastor. And there's this question. Are you fascinated by fire? And of course you're fascinated by fire. Fire's amazing. But do you answer yes or no? Yes, all the time. You answer honestly because if you don't answer honestly, it's not a fair assessment. So answer honestly. And also, it won't, if you answer yes, it won't, like, send any red flags. If you answer yes to all of them about fire, maybe. But anyway, so I just, so I needed to give you that backstory so you can understand how much I love this image. Um, the tongues of fire appeared among them and rested on each of them. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages. Over the course of the pandemic, my children have been learning languages through an app called Duolingo. Um, Thaddeus is learning French and Sophia is learning German and Latin. And I picked it up this year and I'm learning Spanish, but I'm not sure, I don't think, that the only type, this is the only type of language to speak. Certainly a straight reading of this text would lead one, could lead one to believe that the disciples immediately became fluent in a language that was not their first language. Speaking with Parthians or Medes or Elamites or residents of Mesopotamia, Mesopotamia, Judea or Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and other and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. Now, hear me clearly. I believe that the power of the Holy Spirit can do way more than we can ask or imagine. So it might be that you're walking down the street and the Holy Spirit lands on you and you can speak fluent Dutch. Maybe not. I'm not in charge of the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit can do all kinds of stuff that I can't even imagine. So I also believe, though, that we are all multilingual. Now, you might not be able to speak Spanish or Mandarin or, or Dutch. 
but you can speak the language of a mother who is worried about her kids, uh, of a lawyer who has training in litigation, a, teacher's, a teacher who studies science or art or literature. You speak the language of a five-year-old exploring the world and soaking, in up, soaking up all there is to offer. You speak the language of a child coping with the health, uh, coping with health and journey of their diminishing parents. You speak the language of a single person navigating life on their own. You speak the language of those with differing abilities who can connect in profound ways. I want to tell you a quick story that I heard this week. Shelby Martin, who has been a part of this congregation uh, almost her whole life. Um, uh, Julie Martin said to me this week that she has received a spiritual awakening. I was like, oh, that's fascinating. Call me more. Every day, Shelby says, church later, because Shelby feels connected here. The Holy Spirit can move and does move in ways that are outside our understanding and right in front of us if we open our eyes to see them. I believe that, like the disciples, we can speak to those we come in contact with in a language that they can understand. I believe, like the disciples, as Terry McDowell Ott, editor and publisher of the Presbyterian Outlook, says, we are a religious minority at the time that they lived. The, the disciples were a religious minority at the time that they lived, and we, in this church, are a religious minority in the time that we live. We were and can be, they were and we can be easily persecuted for our strange beliefs. They were and we are gathered, we gather for support and accountability. They were and we remain faithful they promise, they faithful to the promises that they promised each other and we promise each other in worship. They and we will not let the good news of Jesus Christ go unproclaimed. Now, I can see your faces. And you're wondering, how can we be a religious minority in the United States of America as Christians? But I want to explain what I mean. Certainly, in the United States, as Christians, we are not considered a religious minority, and nor should we be. We certainly aren't persecuted in the same ways that Jews or Muslims or Sikhs or Buddhists or Hindus or Wiccans or pagans have been and are still in this country. But among those worldwide that call themselves Christian, we hold a minority opinion. The fact that we proclaim and attempt to live into the fact that all of God's creation is beloved and, a sacred, is a min and sacred is a minority opinion among Christians. The fact that this month, this Pride Month, we celebrate the beautiful, diverse, and bountiful illustrations of identity, orientation, and expression with our LGBTQIA siblings that is a minority opinion among worldwide Christians. The fact that we believe that and we proclaim that, First Presbyterian Church of Red Wing, Minnesota is a congregational family that seeks to grow in the love of Jesus Christ and to share that love, to share that love with the community and the world. We welcome all who seek to follow Jesus regardless of race, age, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, nationality, ethnicity, physical or mental ability, marital status, family arrangement, education, political affiliation, economic circumstance, or theological perspective. We commit ourselves to loving God and building a community where all are loved. These are minority opinions. And the Holy Spirit will not 
allow the good news of Jesus Christ's unconditional love and acceptance go unproclaimed. We, like Peter, have the opportunity to stand in the public square and proclaim that God's Spirit, God's Spirit will alight on all and over and over and over again. God is inviting us to listen. To listen to the prophecy of our children. To live into the dreams of the old and the young. To heed the words of those on the margins. Friends, I know that proclaiming that God loves all of God's creation without exception or condition is a hard thing to say. You get more press when you tell people that God hates others. You get more traction in the world when you exclude by using God's totally inclusive name. And I know that it's hard to proclaim a loving God regardless of actions. Especially in a world where people proclaim that they are right and you are wrong. It, I know it's hard to refuse to pick up the weapons of war, to lash out in violence, physical or emotional or spiritual or mental, when the world tells us we must strike first. I know this world wants us to be bombastic and aggressive wants us to take and take and take. But the message that Christ left with his disciples was love as I have loved you. This is not a feeling. This is an, an action. We are called to love God with all that we have and love our neighbor as ourself. This is not a system of beliefs. That's not a do as I say, but not as I do philosophy. It's in a way to embrace the power that you have through the Holy Spirit. The power to speak the language of love in a way that can be heard. The power to stand strong with those who are on the margins. The power to trust in God and to believe in the love of God no matter what. Do not be tempted to fall into the binary nature of our world. Our world is so filled with beauty and anger and fear and joy. Sit with it. Know that God is with you through tragedy, through jubilation, through ho-hum days where you don't feel like doing anything. The Holy Spirit sets a light on each one of you. Speak the way and the language that the Holy Spirit gives you power to speak and do it in the way that may make you uncomfortable but know that you are supported here, in this building, here in this world, and through this community. May it be so, and amen. I now have the distinct pleasure of introducing our special music for today, uh, played by Thaddeus, Who, who's going first? Sophia, and Thaddeus Bolt.
This morning, as we gather around the table, um, if you ha- if you have not had an opportunity to get a um, cup with um, we c- I call them a rip and sip, but I don't want to call it that. But I did already. Um, it's got a little gluten-free wafer in it and some uh, cup. If anyone needs one of those, if you raise your hand, we'll get you one. Um, awesome. This seems like everybody. And you, at, those joining us at home, if you would take the time to find a common grain and a fruit of the vine, uh, that would be fantastic. This morning, um, we come to this table, and I, I, I mean, I'll be frank with you, I come to this table with a lot of different, uh, differing emotions. Um, I love Pentecost. Um, I love the song. I just got to spend a couple of days uh, out in the woods, uh, hiking with uh, and sitting at, at night by a fire um, and enjoying laughter and mosquito bites. And also you come back to the world and you hear all sorts of um, people losing loved ones, uh, young people hurt, continued gun violence. and. And sometimes they engage to, to go back to the woods and just stay there, to disengage from the work of the community, whether that be volunteering in the schools or um, participating in community conversations. But in all of that, I remember that we have this table this table where all are invited, regardless of political affiliation, regardless of joy or trauma, regardless of where you are today. You are invited to this table if you know exactly what this bread and cup mean for you. You're invited to this table if you have no idea what I'm talking about, or if you've never partaken of this bread and this cup. You are invited to this table if you've had this meal untold numbers of times. You're invited if you've never had it. You're invited to this table if all you have is faith, and you are invited to this table if all you have is doubt. Because this is not, it is not I who invites, but Christ. Christ who came and was the incarnate word of God for us here on this earth. Come to this table where bread and cup are transformed by the Holy Spirit into a meal of love and grace. A supper of visions and dreams, a table where all souls are welcome. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us, Lord our God, loving God whose divine lungs exhaled the Spirit into our world, your breath continues to transform our world from the still to the stirring, from the earth, but the earth, before the earth was formed, the spirit swirled through voids and shadows. As humans were created, the air of God filled the lungs of Adam and the soul of Eve. The, this divine air continues to fill us up when our bones are dry and our spirits are sluggish. On this day of Pentecost, we celebrate the breath of the spirit coming upon the disciples. We invite the Spirit to come upon these elements. God of winds, pour out your Spirit to make the elements come alive for us. Make this meal awaken our sleepy hearts and stagnant souls. May this time of eating and drinking be one where we stir from our sadness and rise from our hopelessness. We may, be, we, may we begin to celebrate visions and animate the dreams that have only been alive in our minds. As we share this meal, let us remember our siblings in faith who came to this table in decades and centuries past. 
and our children who will surround this table in the future. Each genera generation uniquely celebrates your, present, your presence, Spirit of Life. The night before Jesus died was a solemn time around the table, breaking bread and drinking from the cup, Jesus asking to remember him and our eating and drinking. There was a time to mourn, followed by a time to dance. After the day of resurrection, the disciples ate at the beach with the risen Christ, celebrating new life and new hope and new vitality. On this Pentecost, as we come to the table, let us celebrate the spirit of resurrection and the promise of a needed second wind in our own lives. Let us partake of this celebratory meal together. And let us join our voices with, every, with all the saints of every time and place with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou hast the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus gathered with his friends, and he took bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and he said, This is my body, given for you. As often as you eat of it, do so, remembering me. And in the same way, after dinner, Jesus took the cup and he said, This is the cup of the new covenant, poured out for the forgiveness of sins in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so, remembering me. Friends, as often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the risen Christ already and not yet. I now invite you to take some time and to eat your bread and drink your cup and pray a prayer of thanksgiving and patience. Please join me in the prayer after communion. Spirit, oh. Yeah, that works. Spirit of God, who fed the multitudes, provided the manna in the wilderness, and blessed the elements, we give great thanks for the meal eaten, the company surrounding us. Inspire us as we move forward this day and encourage us to transform our dreams into reality. Amen. Now rise in body or spirit and join us in our final hymn, hymn number 769, Everyone Born.
When I was thinking about the scripture this week, I thought about two quotes. One from Frederick Buechner, here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. And I was reminded of a quote that sits in the Lead Lodge in Nebraska City, Nebraska by Margaret Mead. Never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. Friends, our minority opinion that people are loved because God created them. God created the world. The bugs, the rash, the creepy things, the insects, the snakes, so many snakes <laughs> in state parks and at the man house. God created all of it and it is all to be loved and it is all to work together. Even the mosquitoes somehow. That opinion, while may be a minority opinion within the culture of the Christianity in the United States and in the world, it is not a minority opinion for God. Speak up. Speak out for those who are pushed to the side, knowing that every single day God looks down upon each and every one of us, one of you, and says, Beloved, with you I am well pleased. Republicans, Democrats, Independents, we all have felt pushed aside at some point. Don't push back. Listen, love, and allow yourselves to be loved. Live your belovedness. Know it in here. Feel it in here. Live it out there. Because God's word is a word of love and action. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the love of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever.